means because, like, if you look at this, this nudist European women, this definitely uh, is from the 60s, and it came 1966, and it's from Denmark. And it, it came out of our archives, and now we have absorbed it into our zine collection. Okay. All right, and Elisa's next, and she's going to talk about the librarian next. <laughs> called Xenifying. So part of our collection is not a traditional zine like this, but wonderful items like these. Oh my God, this could be a bestseller. Right? Yes. So we call them an alternative publication. Yes. <laughs> AP. AP. Wow. So we also, uh, our collection comes from wonderful donors like Larry Bob um, and lots of zine creators. In April, we had published pieces, which was our first zine fest. We encourage everyone who's interested in sex scenes to participate in that. It's really successful and we look forward to next year's Zine Fest. Um, so, though in the uncovering of this, we um, ran into cataloging issues. Uh, currently, we don't have a traditional library catalog. We use Goodreads for cataloging everything so far. Um, so, zines, magazines, journals are not allowed on Goodreads. So we came up with a different method. Next slide. So we came up with the term community cataloging. I didn't actually come up with it, but I interned at the American Poetry Archive at San Francisco State. And at that time, they were working on archiving their intense amount of recordings they have of poets. And they would do a community cataloging project there. And so each semester, they would get a group of 10 to 12 students each student would choose their own poet. And for the entire semester, they would research that poet and listen to the intense amount of recordings held by the archive. And so from that, at the end, they would turn in their catalog notes to them. We would give them a quick down and dirty, this is what we need from you, this is how you catalog, here's the structure, give us everything you've got. And at the end of that, the library turned to them, take their notes, turn it into metadata, then you the XML So I got the idea from uh, the archive center that we should do that as well. From doing community cataloging, you get a, a deeper and greater understanding of the product. So like for the poet, spending a whole semester with one poet, those students really came back with some quality information and metadata. Um, so metadata and data and that data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the more, and the, the richer that you get from that, the better the, the quality of the data will be. So for like Ian, when he catalogs a zine, he reads the entire zine, so probably sometimes twice. And um, the information he gathers from it is way deeper than a normal cataloging standard would be. Um, the end, 
And our end goal for cataloging would be to be part of the union catalog, which is a shared cataloging system using libraries around the country worldwide. Um, of course, that's kind of long and far and needs money. So, next slide. Um, anyone know Zineform? Anyone know QZAP? Yeah. It's the Queer uh, Zine Archive. Oh. I got my QZAP shirt. On. And so <laughs> Milo from um, QZAP created what's called ZineCore. ZineCore is based on a Dublin core, it's a metadata library standard. And so when we say standards, we mean we want the same information, we want all zine libraries to catalog the same way so we can be on the same page. So that people can find so people can find stuff. And so when you use the same standards, we all can find stuff the same way. What will be different is the way we catalog the zine people because we're doing it deeper and richer and better. <laughs> and we want unity with all of the zine libraries. We want it now. Next slide. So this is an example of the zine core's metadata. Um, it's pretty basic. Title, creator, subject, publisher, contributor, date, physical description, union ID, that's the lofty goal when we all become part of the same library catalog. We'll all be able to find each other. Um, so in our initial cataloging at CSC, we pretty much had the standard going. We only ended up adding a few things, which my favorite is freedoms and restrictions. Um, for me, and I hope for most librarians and most artists, we want our work out there and we want everyone to share it and we want everyone to have access to it. So it's nice to see creators copyright their stuff and make sure that it's shareable. Use Creative Commons licenses. So this is just a basic structure of um, how Milo created it and is pushing for most of the libraries to go this way. It's nice. <laughs> And now, <laughs> the one and only, our accidental librarian, community cataloger, Ms. Ian, this is the accidental librarian. He's going to talk about community cataloging. So this is, I get to do the day to day. So now you get to see one of the sexy days. And this is a photo that I screenshotted from a porno that we accidentally found that's filmed at the Center for Sexy Culture. <laughs>
mean that in a way that is like when you learn from your friends when you're in, I don't know, grade school, but also from adults who don't know how to talk about sex either. And also probably many of your teachers in high school and college also have a hard time saying dick, vagina, whatever in front of kids and being really honest about these things. So zines are a way that people have been educating themselves and others about sexualities that aren't uh, norm sexualities, but also just things that you wouldn't know because there's so much information about sex in general that uh, we don't really get like a full scale fun version of what how sex is fun and interesting and very creative and you know there's the limitations are endless. Okay, so lots of energy.
Did you guys want to talk about it? I want you to talk about your experience with My experience with Tumblr? Okay, so <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out how this shit works. But okay, we worked on it a lot to figure out. All right, it's mostly like, does anyone, everyone know what Tumblr is? Maybe I'm still on that game or so. But more or less, if you don't know, it's um, a place where you can post pictures, quotes, websites, videos. It's kind of like Facebook, but it's not like your personal profile. It's kind of throwing media up. It's, a good, it's good for image base. And our main concern, too, was we didn't have a budget for uh, a website or a catalog. So right. it's That's free. True. We're working with free stuff. OK, next slide. The evolution. Um, <laughs> this is a picture of a little bit of that was in also with our CSC. That's a big show. Yeah, that's a big show. Um, the evolution, I don't have a lot to say about this, mostly it was just like a pretty slow learning curve for me. <laughs> I don't think that's, that's not true. <laughs> but um, uh, if you go to the next slide, it's, uh, it's easier for me to show you the pros, which is we scan all the covers. It looks badass. There's no order. So you can kind of scroll for days and like be sort of, you won't be just looking at a certain topic, it'll be like lots of interesting things that you can see all of this. Um, we have them all in the library, so you can look at the cover and then come immediately and hang out with us for a bit. Um, the accessibility is really easy, it, like it looks good and the information is right there um, underneath the scan cover. So you can read like where it came from. Unless, and this is also good too, if you're looking at the same thing and there's missing information and you know it, you should tell us. Um, and then it's really easy to re-blog. So in the education, communication, and sharing thing, it's really easy to share all this information now if someone wants information on the unit and just like click it over and like send them a link, which is really easy. Uh, and then quick one more time. This and this will be this is what it looks like for us. Yeah. Bring that internet here so that I took screenshots. <laughs> But, um, it's an awesome yeah. Tumblr. <laughs> What's your address on Tumblr? It's just cscene.tumblr.com. Yeah. And it's in that zine that I Oh, is it now? Yeah. I'll give you a little part. Okay. So as you can see, it just like, it just sort of scrolls up and like, it's going to have the cover of the zine and then you'll have like, the title, the additional title. You made it look very like, great. Right? The author, um, the publisher name and address maybe, Subjects. So here, like for example, this is a cock woman, and it's really good, and it has sort of a transgender uh, theme in general. But it's also like having read it, they talk a lot about Jane County, who is a trans rock star who's really awesome. So <clears throat> it's a lot of history on them, gender queerness, gender outlaws, and Stealing your own makeup. They had that as like, <laughs> you're going to be really a diva queen, you have to steal your own makeup. Um, so, next slide. And the cons are there aren't any in order. So, you can scroll and kind of. The other thing I found out is that our search button sucks. I don't know why. But you can like basically type in a scene. I'll type in scenes that I know are there. Click search and it'll be like, no, you don't have that. So, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with that. But we'll like, I find the same thing with Tumblr. You're searching for tags, and for yeah. tags, and you can search for that tag, and maybe it comes up, maybe it doesn't. Exactly. So just blame Tumblr yeah. for this fault. <laughs> and so yeah, and it is it is a lot of work to read the scene, then catalog it in our online cataloging Google Doc. Yeah, go back to that. Can you go back to the last slide. Or there's a there's another slide. Can you point out where you can link to our database of the catalogs? There, there it is. is. Yeah, so from the Xenon Free Catalog Database, that's oh. the huge database of all our catalogs. It's not pretty, but it's got way more information. It's got pretty much the same information, but deeper. It's a giant, it's huge, it's ugly and unmanageable, but it is in alpha order. If you're a researcher, that's where you need to start. Yeah. There's no database. <coughs> and it's easier to search, though. Okay, so next slide is the cons. They're not in any order. You can just, yeah, but like I said, a lot of work. And then the next one is another photo of what it's going to look like. So we got drum up there, which is really old. Circus of Love is known as Shane O'Hara coming. The gods sure are queer. Is this person really old? I don't know. It's this cool, like, cool, like, the history of the gods that are queer. And then you can do a bunch of pictures in the middle of the And then, next slide. 
based 
on the content of the proceedings. Um, I know when people are not supposed to, you know, uh, censor, you know, free speech, but you know, or organizations like libraries and and university libraries do, you know, limit that. So if you um, donate to the Zen Denver Zine Library or our library, we would be showing your zine like no holds bar. Especially if you get us permission. <laughs> Especially if you get us permission. <laughs> Otherwise, you need to get us permission. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, uh, we encourage you guys to volunteer. You're welcome to volunteer. Become community catalogers. We send you along the stack of zines and what we want from you. And it's a really great experience, right, Ian? Um, <laughs> or you could also just volunteer at our library. We love the books. Um, and lastly, if you're a zine creator of sex content, we love donations. So we want your zines in our library. We are a community center, we are community catalogers, and we try to cater to the services of community, large and nationally, and represent that. And hopefully, in the future, we'll have money and budget to make it a real searchable catalog and part of our journey. And we've been going to um, we've been going to like uh, other library events on you know, what we're going to do with zines, you know. So we're pretty much in the know of what's going on with um, um, giving access to zines in libraries, and we want to be able to be those advocates for you. We want everybody to like have the benefit of having a zine in the library. It's just that a lot of librarians. out specifically about the cataloging or any of the work you guys have been doing with zines? Yeah, we there's a Yahoo group called Zine Librarians, so it's pretty active and we all communicate on there. Bernard Farmer Library and I have been really active in talking about zine core maybe mainly. So we all kind of are on the same level of that if you don't do you know Zine Librarians group, oh, no, get on it. Okay. Um, and uh, so they're all kind of active in this this theme of Zine Core and getting the same scheme as for our zines. So we can see the So there is a big group. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And all these people, all these librarians that are involved in zines really want you guys. They want your work, they want they see the value of your work, they want it out there. They want it in their library collections. They even have vending machines at Barnard where they put a bunch of zines in this vending machine. You just put like a nominal amount of money in there, you know, out pops your zines. Oh, yeah. If anyone's interested in um, other zine libraries, feel free to email any of us. I'm going to pass out some bookmarks and um, you can contact us. The uh, do you guys know John Missy? He's a oh, yeah. comic book artist. He is the man who did that logo for us and he's also he's a, 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 he's a,